Cyberpunk 2077 is filled with factions, groups, and gangs who you can meet, work with, or work against. And when you're jumping in a night city, you're jumping in as a mercenary. Let's plug in and see who you can work for or against in 2077 and what they're all about. I'm Space Tomato, your random sci-fi gaming YouTube person thingy, and I'd like to thank you for coming to my tomato talk. Now, I just gotta say, if you're looking for somebody to hang out with and chat with about Cyberpunk 2077, and maybe even win a cash giveaway here or there, make sure to check me out on Twitch where I'll be streaming the game when it releases. Now let's jump right in. First up are the animals, mainly concentrated around South Pacifica, and they make sure you know. They aren't cute animals like otters or kittens, no these are like pet cemetery animals that didn't make it into the final novel. They're crazy, and while they do maintain a hierarchy within their group, it is less organized than some of the other gangs. The strongest maintain the power in this group, and are often involved with operations pretty heavily. Disputes are often solved with trial by combat, which is fought until one side completely submits. Most encounters with them will be based on their attempts to expand their territory, push against the voodoo boys who reside in the same neighborhood and are at war with them, and other mysterious end goals which we don't really know the full extent of just yet. When dealing with this group, it will be important to show strength and power in your decisions and actions and be prepared to take tasks and missions that favor those attributes more than, say, techie or netrunner tasks. They also have cornered the market for prize fights, so expect to sign up and earn some money fist fighting in tournaments hosted by the animals, if y'all are on good terms. What? The Maelstrom Gang is also crazy, like actually crazy. Fully, a third of them are clinical cyber psychos, and another third of them are borderline, so yeah. Back when they were called the Metal Warriors, they held on to a code of honor. When their original leader Hammer was thrown out, the code of honor kind of went with him, and now they'll just attack anybody. One time, a maelstrom ganger killed a young kid right in front of my eyes. So expect to have a lot of rather violent run-ins with this group, and more so than work for them, you might just begrudgingly make deals with them, if need be. Maelstrom's territory is the industrial part of Watson, and they are obsessed with cyber technology, and their urge to improve the weakness of human flesh is far stronger than their fear of cyberpsychosis, obviously. The main revenue stream for the Maelstrom gang is smuggling illegal meds and drugs, but they also perform some pretty crazy hit jobs on just about anyone. Another prominent source of income is the Totentaz Club. I don't know if I got that right, but it is the most popular gangster club and quote unquote drink and riot venue in Night City. Finally, rumors say that the gang is involved in the production of black market brain dance records, especially bizarre, disturbing, and extremely violent ones. So. Expect to get involved with that at some point as well. Haywood's Originals. V's origin area belongs to the Valentinos, which could mean some deeper connections throughout the story, and maybe even some particularly unique options with this gang if you decide to go with the street kid life path. Originally a poser gang dedicated to seducing the most attractive women in Night City, the Valentinos are religious, primarily Chicano people, and are one of the largest gangs in the city. Despite the dominant ethnicity, many others join the gang and adopt the culture as well. This sense of common heritage, or at least shared customs, binds the gang with the local people to form one big family. The community's loyalty protects the gang members, which makes the NCPD and corporate infiltrations into the gang almost impossible. In return, the Valentinos protect the whole neighborhood, 
It's for these reasons that betraying one's gang is one of the most heinous crimes that one can commit and is usually punished with a particularly gruesome death. There's a strong sense of honor in this gang. They own many legitimate businesses from restaurants to construction companies and can use all of these as staging grounds for activities. Though their main sources of income are gun smuggling, car theft, drug trafficking, robbery, burglary, hit jobs, prostitution, and illegal modifications of weapons and vehicles. It's a lot. So expect a wide variety of possible jobs and conflicts with the group, and expect clashes between this group and 6th Street to occur throughout the game as they both operate in Vista Del Rey. Speaking of 6th Street, Founded by old-fashioned American Patriot veterans of the Fourth Corporate War, tired of the helplessness of the NCPD, 6th Street was meant to act as an ad hoc police force. They have since forgone their original goal of serving public trust and are now no different from any other gang who abuses their power and control in local communities. Two coffee. <gasps> I'm shocked. Their main motivation is to bring justice to the city, make Night City great again, but their interpretation of the law is questionable and self-serving. Sixth Street's operations include robbery, extortion, and gun smuggling. The gang also has extensive connections with nomad groups outside of Night City. Despite their criminal nature, the gang is mostly tolerated by corporations and police forces unless Sixth Street gangers cause trouble outside their established turf. This means while you may not do much for them, they are easier to approach than other rage-induced groups. The Tiger Claws are a classy, efficient, and resourceful gang who handles a large swath of some of the most affluent areas of Night City. It's a Japanese gang with affinities for street bikes, luminous tattoos, and katanas. Their main goal has been to maintain their territory, continue to funnel the local money into their pockets, and occasionally annex some land for themselves. They are organized and harsh and are ready to do what needs to be done to keep order in their territory. You know what else they do well? Break the knees of people who ask questions. As a local of Watson, expect to quickly become acquainted with the Claws and look for opportunities to work with them earlier on in your journey. The top brass of the Claws believe business is preferable to war in the long run, but if you cross anybody in the gang, expect them to come down on you hard, as many in the gang don't subscribe to that line of thought. They own more businesses in Night City than any other gang and generally make money from human trafficking, prostitution, and manufacturing and distributing drugs, so expect work in that strain of crime if you end up working jobs for them. And if you do get tangled up in the claws, expect to run into the Moxes, a reactionary group and almost brand new to the city as of 2077. They're relatively small, non-territorial, and consist mostly of sex workers, anarchists, punks, and sexual minorities. Lizzie Wizzy was a popular singer and minorities rights icon in Night City. And in 2076, one of her girls was brutally raped and murdered by Tiger Claw gangers. Lizzie avenged her by killing three of the assailants with an axe and displaying their bodies in front of her club, proclaiming that the same would happen to anyone else who hurt a prostitute. That night, Tiger Claws raided and demolished her bar before killing Elizabeth, which sparked riots across the city and created the Moxes. Given the background, philosophy, and mission of the gang, it does come off as the most altruistic of the bunch. Though be aware, you don't get by in Night City without doing what needs to be done for yourself. They run several brothels, which profit from prostitution and charge high prices to their clients. Note that the Moxes don't have their own territory as I mentioned earlier, they mainly stay around Lizzie's bar and profit from that, given the vast amount of brain dance money it makes for them. They do not create confrontation out of the blue and are mostly defensive, so expect a different flavor of contracts and storyline with them. Less gunfights and more talking. Most likely with everybody's favorite brain dance tech, Judy. A mysterious gang from Pacifica with a dark reputation for their net running skills and their mystical voodoo flavor. Presumed to entirely consist of members with Haitian blood, the Voodoo Boys are exclusive, secretive, and distrustful to outsiders. 
Some don't even believe the gang properly exists. No outsider has ever successfully infiltrated the gang. They have no fixed headquarters or no crash pads. The location and time for the next meeting is chosen at the end of each meeting. At least two high profile medias have died while trying to cover this gang. They are considered a priority for the NCPD, violent and dangerous. The terror they inspire has been successful in keeping the local merchants quiet and uncooperative with the police. They are not to be trifled with. They are also the most talented gang in the art of net running and are known to attempt to breach the black wall in hopes of making contact with rogue AIs. This has gotten them the attention of Netwatch, who are interested in tracking and dispatching rogue netrunners and self-aware AIs. Expect more sophisticated and deep lore contracts and missions with the Voodoo Boys, as well as missions that allow you to flex your netrunner knowledge a bit more. While incredibly dangerous and reclusive, they have territory to keep and lofty goals to meet. You could make good money in helping them. The Wraiths are one of the two most prominent nomad groups inhabiting the Badlands. They are kind of Reaver-like, or like the War Boys. While nomads usually operate in the judicial gray area, the wraiths ignore the law. They are vicious as well as aggressive and have dominated the areas surrounding Night City. They raid small villages as well as attack small groups of nomads and attack weakly guarded corp transports. They mainly make money by raiding others and are pretty untrustworthy, so don't expect to work for them much, if at all, but instead expect jobs that put you at odds with them or in their favor, briefly. They do, however, seem to run some desert races that you can no doubt enter and win some money and reputation. Dating all the way back to the 1990s, the Aldecaldos come from a family which originated in California. While they have a long history of frequent conflict and warring with the other nomad group, the Wraiths, unlike their aggressive rivals, the Aldecaldos are more open to making deals with V. So expect to spend more time working with them, hanging out with them, and maybe even more. They are a very close group that tends to rely and trust only themselves and have a vast and very successful history coming from the first nomad family in history. The story is actually really interesting and might be worth making another video about that group all on its own. They generally make their money from scavenging, bootlegging, and transporting stolen goods. So expect to work with them against their rival gang, the Wraiths, and in transportation based contracts that have you driving throughout the Badlands and moving packages into Night City. Like I said in the beginning, in Night City, you're a merc. And while mercenaries don't have allegiance, they are creatures of habit, and the place to be for any respectable merc is the afterlife. At this high-end exclusive bar, you'll be able to find fixers, your most common employer in the game. Some fixers are making their own way, and some are running empires as some of the most successful people in the city. Your job is going to be to make long-lasting working relationships with these folks so that you always have a top dollar making contract waiting for you when you're done enjoying life for the night. With these street contracts, you won't necessarily be changing the course of history every time, but as you grow and progress, you could very well cause lasting cascades that will result in consequences and benefits that could follow you throughout the entire game. And if you're the kind of person that doesn't like bars, well, don't worry, you can find fixes in various locations depending on their schedule. Finally, when you enter Night City, you're going to want to know about the people who own and run it. The de facto government. The Corpos. These people are heartless. They see nothing but money and power. They are the beginning and the end, and they will never accept that they don't come out on top. I fucked you over, you fucked the gang over. Somewhere at the start of the story, somebody fucked the Corp. See how this works now? Only the Corp gets what it wants. You will take various types of jobs from them that generally consist of backstabbing, zeroing as it's called, protecting IPs and maintaining the order of things which keep them on top. And that's the thing, their IPs and tech are your tools. Their property is implanted in your body and their weapons are in your hands. So that can complicate things a little bit. 
Now, there are tons of corporations, though they all fall under the Most High, Arasaka. That being said, you'll find plenty of work and opportunities pertaining to the vast amount of companies that are looking for your sacrifice. It's best to keep your card up though, as when they're done working with you, you may very well end up being their next target. While these are the main groups you'll be dealing with in Cyberpunk 2077, they're not the entire bunch. Keep your eyes and ears out as you explore the streets, rooftops, and badlands, as you'll always come across opportunities to engage with groups of all sizes and beliefs. It's up to you to decide when it's worth it for your interests and goals. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something and subscribe so you can come back and see more of my Cyberpunk 2077 content leading up to and long after the release of the game. As I mentioned before, I'll be streaming this game as well as making YouTube content for you guys in the meantime. And if that's not enough and you find yourself a fan of sci-fi gaming, well, I've got a Discord community that's primarily focused on sci-fi video games, where you can come play and chat and just hang out if you're into that kind of thing. And again, many thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the city.